Well, hello everybody. Um, I'm uh, Dimitri. Um, I'm I'm going to be speaking in English today because my Greek is uh, not uh, really good enough. I hope that's okay with uh, with most people. Um, <coughs> I'd like to I'd like to first talk a bit about uh, the story of uh, just how how uh, we got here and. Uh, What's uh, what, yeah? How we started everything. Um, basically, at the beginning, um, I started off. Uh, I went to university and I studied uh, economics, which uh, isn't related to farming at all, really. Um, and um, I started, uh, you know, when I was at university. I didn't enjoy at all the, the really the economics and the prospects and um, everything, uh, um, all the world that I was supposed to go in. And I started looking for alternatives of how to, you know, what to do in my life and etc. And um, I, uh, I ended up in, um, in uh, looking into uh, something that is called uh, permaculture. I don't know if anybody has heard of this before. Uh, permaculture uh, is uh, it's, it's becoming more and more popular at the moment. And um, this, uh, so this basically permaculture is looking at a way that we can live more sustainably and how we can, how we can be, live in a way that's more connected to nature and uh, with less of, an imp less of an impact on our, on our planet. And so I started uh, delving in this world and, um, and I started realizing little by little if I wanted to, I was, I was developing a passion for, for, for nature and, uh, and trying to find a way to, to work with her and I quickly realized that if I wanted to work with nature I was going to have to become a farmer. And um, that led me to, uh, to start looking into how can we farm in, in a way that, uh, that is more ecological, in a way that's more sustainable. And especially looking at, you know, what's the current problems of, uh, of, the, of the farming, uh, of the current farming model, let's call it a conventional uh, farming model. And um, so I started... Uh, I started uh, studying on my own a lot. Uh, all the, I started uh, doing courses with different farmers. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you in a while. Uh, I started uh, reading every book I could find on uh, on uh, on different subjects: soil, uh, microbiology, etc. And um, I was basically I didn't I was studying this on my own. I wasn't really uh, studying this at uh, at uh, university, or I didn't do agronomer, agronom agr uh, agronomical studies, or or farm studies. This was something I did uh, um, on my own. And, but especially uh, what I, what I managed to, to 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 do is to approach some of the professionals that really inspired me. Some of the farmers that were out there that were really doing a good job, and and follow them and uh, and study with them. And um, um, I started again, like through this process, I was, I was, uh, I was becoming more and more. Uh, I was understanding more and more what's what's actually wrong with the way that we're farming at the moment and uh, the way things are, are being done, and um, seeing kind of the, the mess that uh, that we're in um, because, um, and a lot of it caused by 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 our agricultural practices. Um, we can talk a bit as well about uh, what these. Um, specific uh, uh, problems uh, problems are maybe as we as we look at uh, at, uh, at the alternatives they'll they'll give us a mirror really um, and so again all this process led me to uh, to uh, some of these guys uh, some of these farmers that I'm going to show you and I want to show you some of the things that they're doing and that's going to be set a bit of a basis for you guys to understand what we're trying to do. Um, 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 on our farm, really. But uh, before we started the farm, I was studying with these guys, and I'm just going to show you a few uh, a few uh, uh, pictures of some some of these guys here. This is Mark Shepherd. He's got a farm called New Forest Farm. When you look at this, you obviously it doesn't look like your conventional farm. There's lots of uh, weird uh, um, lines everywhere, and uh, and uh, things are are not straight, and things are uh, maybe look uh, a bit messy. Um, this, um, so Mark Shepard, he's, um, he's using some, a technique called uh, agroforestry, um, specifically. Um, but he's also part of a movement that we call regenerative agriculture. And that's something I want to, I want to talk uh, about today. And regenerative agriculture basically is, it's, 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 it's a movement at the moment that's trying to develop solutions as to how can we produce food in a world where 
um, our population is increasing. It's now 7 billion. It's going to be 10 billion by 2050. And in which every year where land is being degraded up to the point that actually every year there's 12 million hectares. That's the size of Greece that's becoming desertified. So that's fertile land that is now become infertile and difficult to, to cultivate due to the way that we're treating it, due to the way that we're treating the land, due to the way that we're farming. Um, and so regenerative agriculture is trying to deal with this problem. How can we produce food and be productive whilst at the same time regenerate our soil, regenerate our ecosystems, regenerate our land? And um, so m one of the techniques within this is, is agroforestry, and this is something when I heard about it at the beginning, uh, I started liking trees more and more, and uh, I was becoming a real passionate about, about trees. And when I heard about agroforestry, farming with trees, farming within a forest, that's what it is. Agroforestry is putting forests and farming together in, in one. Um, I was, uh, it was a really, uh, um, it was uh, you know, extremely exciting. I, and this is a kind of a, a farm where you can see agroforestry being, being put into practice. You've got lots of, uh, lots of uh, uh, tree lines and in between the tree lines you've got something that's called intercropping where you have plants here of uh, wild asparagus and, um, and wheat and um, annual grass is being, being, uh, being uh, grown in between the lines of trees. We'll talk more about, about that uh, uh, in a sec. This is an example a bit more close up of what intercropping looks like where you have, you know, you can, you can imagine an asparagus field, it's just asparagus and what this guy's saying is let's put some trees in there, let's let the trees um, um, bring uh, economic benefits such as ch uh, chestnuts in this case and hazelnuts and apples so they're, they're bringing a crop but at the same time ecological benefits, ecological services such as preventing the leaching of nutrients, creating um, diversity, creating polycultures, all of these things help with uh, activating, nutri um, activating ecosystem services which you know ecosystem services is what makes the forest run on its own without anybody taking care of it and so again this is part of the big picture of how can we biomimic nature and um, and um, use, like harness the power of the forest, han use the techniques of the forest and apply them onto our farms. That's uh, agroforestry kind of summed up and, and, and shown quickly. So uh, here as, as well what you can see is that um, there's less space dedicated to asparagus, so there's a lower production on the whole hectare of asparagus, but you get a much higher production of calories in total because what you have is um, what you have is um, um, chestnuts, apples, etc. All these trees taking advantage of the 3D, taking advantage of space and being more productive, capturing more photosynthesis and producing more calories. And here, here it's asparagus, but what's interesting with everything that's happening here uh, at uh, uh, these past three days is that we could pot potentially replace this with cannabis. And then we could... We, sorry? Oh, but by that I mean the annual crop, so well, uh, asparagus is, is, uh, is a perennial gr uh, grass, but imagine instead of the asparagus having um, s uh, cannabis. And so again, and, and the, important, the importance of that is that we are including perennial crops, we're including uh, trees into our systems, which is a way in which we can, um, we can satisfy the ecological needs of, uh, of our farms, uh, be more responsible ecologically, but at the same time, use them as, for example, on my farm, I've got figs and pistachios and pomegranates and, and they're going to be in, uh, intercropped, um, let's say, with, I'm looking at the moment for what I can do, uh, I'm looking at asparagus, I'm looking at, at, uh, at cannabis, but I'm, I'm, I'm planting trees, but I'm planting trees that are productive. So I'm using trees as a, as a, for all their ecological benefits, the organic matter that they produce, um, uh, the diversity, the insects that they, the birds that they create habitat for, all these things that control my system that help me have a, a sustainable agricultural system. But, uh, so they're doing this and they're producing pomegranates, figs, pistachios. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's a more productive system and as, as well as a more uh, ecological system. So yeah, Im imagine in, in, the, in, in the middle um, cannabis. Um, and that's uh, something to... So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. But they... 
they work together. You can plan them together. The the difficulty is in um, is in the farm. The farmer has to become um, qualified in well, has to become capable of farming figs and also farming uh, cannabis. But and that, the difficulty is in the knowledge. The difficulty can be in the complexity of the marketing, the complexity of the of the processing. But there's solutions around that. <coughs> I didn't quite understand what... Yes, so one of the advantages of that is that you've got um, a more healthy system. You've got uh, less, pro less work to be, to be done. And, and this is not something I'm saying uh, uh, like this, this science that, uh, that uh, backs this. Uh, when you have a polyculture, you have less pest problems. You have less fertility problems. Your soil is regenerating. As your soil is rege regenerating, you have a, a, um, a stronger crop. As you have a stronger crop, you have more nutrients inside the food you're producing, for example, or better quality food, better quality medicine. Um, but also, if you, see, if, you, if you see this, a conventional, let's say, a conventional chestnut orchard would have exactly this, but in the middle, they just have grass. Here, what you're doing is, I have 50 stremata, for example. Um, and what I'm doing with this system, for example, is I'm making my farm even more productive. So on 50 stremata, instead of of producing, let's say, 10 tons of, uh, or 20 tons of, uh, of, uh, of uh, calories and nothing else. I'm producing 20 tons of calories and uh, one ton of, uh, of uh, CBD, um, uh, of cannabis seeds, for example. So I'm becoming more productive on less land. So it's also got economical benefits on that front, for example. Um, Another, per another person, while I was going through this whole studying, um, I was studying with these guys, some of them online, so they do these um, online courses that uh, anybody can do, and um, interactive, obviously, so they, you do projects and you send them in and they give you feedback, etc. Some of them in person. Another guy <coughs> that I studied with that was fascinating, and he's a, a, a very good example of regenerative agriculture, so just repeating myself, an agriculture that regenerates the soil as well as is hyperproductive, is Richard Perkins. So here you see he has a, a market, so he's producing vegetables on this side, but what he's doing here um, is called silver pasture. So here on the, on the lines over here, for example, these are trees. This is early on in his system. So here you have tree lines. Again, he's using trees, but in between his trees, he's got, he's got pastured uh, chickens. Uh, and that's another way in which we can include agroforestry in the production of here, chickens. Um, and uh, in this case, it's for, uh, it's for meat and eggs, uh, etc. And um, again, you can, you can, we can, when we're talking about the asparagus or the cannabis, you can also use animals if that's, uh, um, if that's the type of, of production you, you can include. But what I'm, what I'm trying to, the point that I'm trying to say here is that I realize that we, can, we really can, and it's been proven out there, integrate trees into the production, into our agricultural system. So here, he's a chicken farmer, but he's included trees. His, uh, his trees in there are, are, basic, are mostly apples, pears, and some berries. And that produce food and that he gets an economic income out of, but as well as as well as uh, as, uh, as all the ecological benefits. Um, another person that uh, I managed to study with, and um, in this this time uh, in in person, I went on his farm and spent uh, six months uh, working with him. is called Ernst Gotch. He's um, he's a Swiss person that's uh, uh, working in uh, in Brazil at the moment. And um, he's doing uh, something a bit more, uh, taking it even further, the whole integrating tree concept. Basically, here what you can see is he's, this is a banana uh, uh, system producing bananas, and he's including in the system uh, eucalyptuses. So he's using these eucalyptuses to bring the water from deep, and deep down, bring it up, and then he prunes the eucalyptuses, and this produces fertility and organic matter that feeds the system. So this is a way in which, again, he's using trees, much more, much closer, much more integrated with his production, to provide the benef the services of fertility, uh, mulch, so protecting the soil, um, um, water retention, reducing evaporation, protecting from the wind, all of the different benefits that trees uh, can provide. Um, so this is what we call complex agroforestry systems. And what, what you'll notice here is that um, 
none of these are happening in the same in the, in our ecosystem, which is a Mediterranean uh, dry uh, area, uh, although it's not very dry at the moment. Um, and so, when I started uh, after I, I I studied with these guys, etc., I started uh, obviously wanting to set up a farm. I came back uh, here uh, to see my family. I managed to convince my family to become farmers, uh, and uh, especially my dad. Uh, he used to work in uh, in uh, business, and now um, he's uh, transformed into a um, a farmer, which is uh, pretty cool. And so, with with his help and my family's help, we managed to um, to uh, purchase a piece of land in Stira, in the south of uh, the south of Evia. And um, uh, we, that's where we purchased 50 stremata, and we and we wanted to set up in Greece, in our in this ecosystem, an example of a farm that uh, a regenerative farm that's working, you know, in in this specific context. Um, so uh, we yeah we we we, we managed to, to get this land, and uh, we started uh, uh, setting up uh, designing the concept, uh, which uh, basically um, our, our, our mission was to research, apply, and share uh, knowledge to accelerate the transition towards regenerative agriculture in the Mediterranean bas basin. And we really believe that you know we need to be improving our agricultural methods uh, in the Mediterranean. Um, or in Greece, especially. Um, uh, Greece is uh, unfortunately very degraded ecologically with all the fires, the overgrazing, uh, tilling, etc. And there's a lot of work to be done to, to basically ensure that we have food security in the future. Because every time that, we're, uh, every time that uh, there's big rains and the rivers, and the, the rivers start running brown and the sea, you see, you see all the brown, um, kind of the brown, how do you say, um, the river that's uh, pouring out uh, brown whatever it is, uh, that's soil that's leaving. That's soil that's going away that we're not going to get back. So that's uh, just one example of how you know, what we're doing is, is, uh, is uh, destroying our ability to produce food in the future as well, destroying our ability to be, to be safe, uh, to, to, to have uh, food security. So we strongly believe that you know, we, needed to, we need to, from everything that I studied, etc., that we need to improve our systems. And so, basically, we're going to do that in two different ways, in three different ways. The first one is, um, or three steps. Um, what we're doing at the moment is we're going through a lot of research and development, uh, researching these different techniques, studying as much as we can, etc., etc. Um, applying this on our farm, on our 50 stemata, so really for it to become you know, true knowledge, not just theoretical knowledge. And then sharing it in an open source way, uh, through uh, the creation of a network, or just sharing it on our website, etc. Sharing all, all the information uh, that, we've div uh, that we've found out, all the mistakes that we've made, etc. So, um, we managed to get a team together, so this is the team, it's quite international. Um, Things have maybe changed a bit in the, in the recent times, uh, but um, well, basically what you can see is a group of young people they're trying to, uh, you know, basically also none of us have uh, come from an agricultural background, uh, which is a weakness, but I think it's also a strength. And um, we're, um, we're all studying, researching, and, uh, and, um, and um, trying to, you know, build solutions. Um, so this is the land that we bought. Um, as you can see, it's got a really nice view, but it's uh, got really bad soil. It's uh, very, very degraded. This is Stira. Um, this is what it looked like uh, in the spring. This is one of the areas of the land that's uh, that's nicer. You can see the grasses have grown. It's hilly, but it's it's uh, it's a very beautiful land. This is the region of Stira. Um, you can see the f the marks of the fires that were in the 2007 that have really destroyed uh, <laughs> this mountain. So now it's becoming a rock. So. Again, we, after when we bought the land, we started the design process. So this is just an example, uh, part of the, our design. We started designing our, our different tree lines. These are, all the, these are our tree lines, in, the, in between which we have the opportunity to intercrop different, uh, different uh, crops. Uh, we managed to get the help of uh, Ernst Gotch, this guy that we studied with. He came over, he helped us out to design the land. And, um, and yeah, so it was a quite a long uh, design process. Lots of mistakes uh, were made. and. Uh, and um, and uh, this is this is um, um, a picture of uh, our our um, our system, agroforest, our forestry system, the way we've planted our our forest, uh, our our trees. This is something that you might not have seen many times before. Um, as you can see, it's it's not j these are basically 
uh, poplars over here, so they're uh, lefka, and uh, acacias uh, over here, plant with the different crops you can see here are pomegranates, um, uh, figs, and pistachios. It's all planted in this way, lines of, lines of pomegranates, and here, lines of figs and pistachios. Uh, I would change this now to just put uh, one line of only figs, or one line of only pistachios, and then one line of pomegranates, with the support, these species in, in the middle that we call support species, because they're the ones that like the picture of the, of the, of the Ernst Gotch guy I showed you, they're the, they're the trees that we're going to prune, that are going to produce the organic matter that help the system. They don't produce a crop, but they help us. Um, so, as you can see, it's, very, it's not just um, one, only one crop, and that's obviously on purpose. We're trying to create a diversified polyculture. And um, a polyculture is a, a, a way of cultivating with many different plants. Um, and, yeah, so that's... Uh, looking a bit at, at our our system, it's here. It's it's when you compare it to a conventional orchard, it's more balancing towards the ecological side. How can we make things more ecologically interest, uh, more ecologically interesting? And the theory is that in the long term, it, that's going to become more economically interesting as well, because we've got to you know think about how we're going to be economical. It's a farm. It's not a, a reforestation project. Um, but as we ma uh, manage our ecology then we're going to have less problems in the future of fertility, of pests and diseases, etc. And we're going to start, it's going to start paying back economically. Um, so this is um, another one of our, of our systems, but um, it's kind of the same thing. So yeah, we started uh, planting, um, we planted about 8,000 trees since the beginning of, uh, of the, um, of, uh, since, uh, when was this that we started? Uh, September of 2017. So we've had two planting winters. We planted 8,000 trees, 1,200 uh, uh, fruit trees, uh, and the rest were support species. So basically for every one fruit tree we have about six or seven uh, species that help, that help it out, that support, we say, that support these crops through, for example, windbreaks, through, uh, inter like I showed you, interplanting in the middle and, um, and um, interplanted and pruned to produce organic matter, fertility. Um, what else? Um, I'll, now I'm, I'm going to go through some of the some of the um, of the techniques that uh, that uh, we're using and we're applying. Um, some of the, some of them are not very common, uh, but uh, might be interesting. Um, but one of the one of the concepts that uh, I haven't I don't think I've I've talked a lot about is that, and that's important for any type of cultivation we have, is that we're trying to. We're trying to biomimic nature. We're trying to understand. Uh, we're trying to imitate the natural processes because they work just fine. They've been developed for uh, millions of years now to re to refine what we currently have, in nature, the way it works so perfectly. So we're trying to mimic that, incorporate that into our agriculture, uh, in order to create resilient and productive systems. It's basically using the technology of nature. Um, instead of using human technology or trying to, we obviously use technology, you can see a tractor, we've got irrigation systems, we're not going against technology but we're, we're really trusting natural technology. How do we manage our pests and diseases for example, all of our insects, instead of spraying chemicals on them, we're gonna, and what we're doing at the moment is identifying what's this insect that's eating our salad, this insect, what's its predator, what's the habitat of its predator, and, can, and then planting that habitat, so planting that bush that has this flower that attracts this insect, as an example. Another way we're managing our pests and diseases is through composts and compost teas. There's different techniques that are basically just using microorganisms, using natural uh, pests and diseases, using um, natural population controls to, and incorporating them into our, 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 um, our farm, using them on our farm to to um, to manage all these different problems it's the same thing with fertility where does fertility come from in nature fertility is produced in the soil itself with bacteria that that, that uh, capture uh, nitrogen bacteria that mine uh, with their enzymes mine rocks and start extracting nutrients from them um, fertility is produced by leaves falling from uh, from trees so well, that's why we're planting a lot of trees we're planting densely that's why we're trying to do whatever we can to develop microbiology in our soil so that that microbiology can 
activate the fertility processes and feed our plants instead of us every year having to throw NPK fertilizer and basically, you know, the plant becomes dependent on us instead of dependent on the system, uh, system in which it lives. Our f these trees, for example, at the moment they're young, they need care, they, they need our help. Uh, but in a few years, if I walk away from my farm, they should take care of themselves. I, won't, I can't walk away for too long, but they shouldn't need so much irrigation. They'll survive without irrigation. Uh, that's at least uh, the theory and uh, what I've seen in, in uh, different areas. Um, and uh, they shouldn't need uh, help in terms of spraying. They shouldn't need help in terms of fertility. They should grow on their own. That's the ideal. Now, how are we going to reach that? That's the, what, the process that we're in. And, and that's something else that uh, I, I haven't uh, uh, um, I mentioned enough, I think. Um, it's really, at, this, at the moment, we've got all these, tech, these, these we've got these, this concept, regenerative agriculture. We've got these ideals, biomimicking nature, um, to produce food. But we're not, we, haven't, we don't know how to do it yet. We're developing solutions about how to do it. It's, it's, we're in a learning process. Um, and that's why we've got a big team there researching and uh, working and uh, we're, we're trying to study with all these people that are finding solutions and uh, to apply it here in Greece. Um, so here is another technique we're using, it's mulch. So here the green machine that you see over there is a wood chipper, it's very common. Um, these are the wood chips that are created. Each tree is, is protected with a thick layer of wood chips that prevents evaporation helps the tree establish itself, creates um, uh, the conditions underneath for, uh, 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 for fungi and for bacteria to develop. And uh, we've seen amazing, uh, amazing results with that actually. And underneath it's full of life even throughout the summer. Uh, we've also been sowing cover crops. Uh, so what I was, this morning um, uh, in the first talk, what I was saying is can we replace these cover crops? So the cover crops are are the, are the grains that are planted in between our tree lines. So basically all this is us that have planted uh, um, uh, wheat, um, uh, barley, uh, oats. Um, we've planted as well um, uh, kukia, uh, lupino, vico, uh, mendiki, different plants like this, a mixture of, of these plants that create fertility. And so can we replace these plants with cannabis? Can we replace uh, this fertility function with cannabis and at the same time harvest the seeds from it, for example? So this is something that I really want to experiment with uh, from now on. Um, another thing that we're developing is uh, we have our nursery. We're developing, uh, uh, we, we've been using a technology that uh, uh, exists for a while now. It's called root trainers. So you see all the roots are going downwards. And when you plant a tree, they're not twisted on themselves. It's super important for the tree to establish itself properly and easily. We're making big compost. This is a 100 meter, uh, meter cubed compost um, of straw and manure. And this is again, Composts are micro, uh, microbiological inoculant, uh, especially aerobic compost. Um, so we had some challenges with this. Um, we, we got the recipe a bit wrong, but we're going to make it better this year. Um, sorry? Yeah, for example, vermicompost we also use as well. That's, uh, it's very fertile. It's very, very rich compost. We, we use the vermicompost for our compost tea. This is, this is the compost tea I was talking about. Basically, you take vermicompost and, uh, and uh, the other compost that you saw uh, over there. You put it into uh, this container and you pump underneath oxygen. So water, oxygen, you put uh, sugars, molasses for example, and different uh, types of food. The compost provides the microorganism, the food feeds the microorganism, and the oxygen provides the conditions for the microorganisms to develop. And you end up with a tea that's really, really rich in microorganisms, uh, fun, fun, different types of fungi, different types of bacteria, protozoa, nematodes, uh, the, whole diver the whole, basically, the whole soil food web um, underneath the microanthropods, all these small uh, microorganisms. And we spray that on our plants. So we spray that on top of our plants. On the ground as well, on the ground as well, it drips and it falls. Uh, you, if, I could, if I could get a helicopter to spray the whole f field with that, I, I would. But uh, it's quite expensive to make in terms of the pump. Uh, it uses quite a lot of electricity, it's quite technical. You have to check it regularly with the microscope and to see that it's, going, it's in balance, it's not anaerobic. Um, and so that's one of the technologies that, for example, we're using for pest control, for inoculating our land with microbiology, trying to 
activate these systems. But this is uh, what I was saying this morning, is this is the technology that's been known to fight botiritis um, uh, successfully. So we're going to be testing it on our, on our grapes this year. Um, actually, I didn't say what plants we have um, on our land at the moment. In terms of trees, we have uh, our production is uh, figs, pistachios, pomegranates, uh, we have uh, prickly pears, so fragosica, uh, we have uh, some uh, vines, and uh, what else do we have? Uh, ah, and almonds, we have some almonds as well. So we've got about, uh, let's say, 1,100 trees and about 3,000 fragosica, 600 vines. So it's, uh, it's quite a lot of compost tea we have to make, <laughs> really. But uh, we're trying to make it uh, a big, on a bigger scale. So this is an example of alley cropping. Uh, what you can see here is we have two lines of trees that uh, need to be mowed as the grasses have grown a bit too much. And in between here we have vegetable beds. I should, I should put a better, a more a picture that uh, it was, it's not a very repre representative, but what this shows that especially in the development years at the beginning, in between your, your, uh, your tree lines, you can plant, um, you can plant vegetables. You can plant cannabis, you can plant, you can put chickens, you can put animals, you can, so there's an opportunity here to make our farms more productive, there's an opportunity here to integrate uh, trees into cannabis, to integrate cannabis with trees, you know, to start thinking a bit more holistic, we need to start thinking a bit more, how does nature develop itself, what's the pattern in nature? Nature creates forests, and the forests get destroyed, and it starts again. It creates forest and it gets destroyed and it starts again. That's a natural cycle of things. So how can we integrate that into our system? I'll let this grow. This is going to become an almond orchard over here. Actually, it's going to be one line of almonds, one line of figs, one line of almonds, one line of figs. I can, if people are interested to know why we do that, I can explain afterwards. <coughs> and um, in 40, 50 years, at the moment I've got grasses, I'm going to have vegetables. Great, that's the first things that naturally happen, that naturally occur after a fire, let's say. Um, the trees are going to start growing, they're going to start developing, they're going to start shading out everything, all the grasses underneath, they're going to start transforming the soil, they're going to create a more fungal environment, a less bacterial environment, the grasses are going to start to go away, they're not going to want to live there anymore, and it's going to become like a forest floor where you have leaves. I'm going to let that grow for maybe another 20, 30 years, and I'm going to cut it all down, and we start again, and I'm going to start planting again vegetables, grasses, etc. That's the natural cycle, that's the natural cycle of succession, and that's what we're trying to apply on our farm. And, and, and actually, some, something I forgot to say before is that all these guys that I showed you before, these guys that we studied with, that helped, that helped us create what we're doing right now, um, they, they kind of extracted some principles in nature, some basic principles. And, um, and it's, it's not, uh, they're, not they're not like complicated, they're complex principles, but they're not complicated to understand. Uh, they're complicated to apply on our farm in a way that that, makes, that enables us to be economical. That's the whole challenge here. It's like I was saying this morning, the whole challenge is how can we create an ecological farming system that's also economical and hyperproductive? Because putting mulch on all of your tree lines, all these like spots of mulch that we said, the wood chips, the focalipso, the focalipso that we, that we produce, uh, it takes time and it takes work. And, uh, and so what's the benefit of doing that? How can we be, you know, how can we apply mulch? This, in a sense, mulch has a huge uh, ecological benefit, but we have to do a cost analysis and see how much financial, how, how much does it cost us financially? Is it worth it? Is there other ways that we can do it? Better ways that we can do it? So the whole balance is about how can we apply these principles, these natural principles, um, with um, uh, whilst being uh, economically uh, economically viable. Uh, some other things that we're doing on the farm is obviously managing for water, the, especially this summer now we're going to be creating a set of dams that uh, capture water and that enable us to be a bit more resilient in terms of water, prevent erosion, etc., which is vital. Uh, we, can, we can't afford to have er erosion on our land. It's, uh, and, and that's one of the, actually erosion is one of the difficulties in the, about producing annual crops. So let's say cannabis, for example. If you're going to produce cannabis, you're going to uh, maybe want to till. If you're going to till, the land and let it exposed, the next time there's a rainfall and the, and the trees haven't developed, erosion, especially if you're on a sloped land. So this is, this is not acceptable really. 
um, we can't afford to lose soil. Soil is what our civilizations depend on, what our civilizations are created upon. So we can't afford to do that. Planting trees every, let's say, I planted my trees every six meters. You don't need to plant them so dense. We can plant our trees every 15 meters. Leave much more space in between for cannabis. Um, and the trees here, when they're planted in a way that's on contour, which basically, I don't, in these pictures you can't really see so much in my pictures, but basically here I'm trying to plant, when you see these, when you see these, these lines that are curving here, especially here, I'm trying, to plant, I'm trying to create lines that are on contour. That means that when the water falls, it hits a tree line perpendicular to the, so here the slope is going this way, okay, so it's, it's sloping this way. My tree lines are perpendicular to the slope, and we call that on contour. Um, and so if you plant your trees on contour, this, you're going to be reducing your erosion. All the, the soil that is going to be flowing away is going to be captured by the tree line, and it's going to be kept on your land. So you keep soil on your land. You can also, on the tree line, create a swale, for example, or a bump that holds water. So all the water that, uh, that runs off because of, of, uh, of uh, for example, 50 millimeters of water that fall in one day gets captured by your trees. The roots let the water infiltrate the soil quicker. So, you know, this is an another way, like a technology that, uh, that helps us uh, the, uh, the trees uh, that help us um, be more be more resilient, be uh, better farmers, um, not lose our resources, not lose our resource base, not lose our soil, um, not lose our fertility, which is at the end of the day what gives us an income. Soil and fertility is what gives the farmer uh, uh, the the his income on the income on which he lives, um, and. Again, uh, repeating myself uh, from before, in these trees, they can be um, these trees. They can be productive in terms of fruit. They can be productive in terms of wood. So we can plant uh, walnuts, for example. We can plant cherries, which have amazing wood, which we, uh, that we can sell in 30 years. So we're building value at the same time as we're building, uh, um, providing ecological benefits. Um, so I guess what the whole my whole case here, what the whole thing I'm trying to I'm trying to present is or trying to say is we need to be including we need to be thinking agroforestry and we need to be including trees into our productive systems um, where was I here okay so this is just some of pictures that show the research and development work that we're doing um, you know, we're trying to do things as professionally as we can, trying to be scientific about things, trying to research, trying to understand, um, trying to learn as much as possible, um, and learn things that are relative to our context here, to Greece. Things that work here will not work. Well, things, let's say this guy I studied from in Sweden. What works in Sweden might not work here. The principles, the natural principles are the same, but the way that we're going to apply them or put them into practice, they're going to be different. Um, these are some other slides, some of the machines that we're using. Okay. Um, at the moment, um, we started about a year and a half ago on the farm, and um, we managed to set up our, our, our tree system. We managed to plant our whole tree system, learn about irrigation, learn about uh, uh, producing compost in nurseries, etc. Uh, we've still got a lot, to, a lot to do, and these are some of the things that we're going to be doing this year. Um, the first one is uh, we're trying to develop a, a short-term economic enterprise. So, for example, if we start producing this year CB, uh, cannabis for CBD, for example, or for or seeds or whatever, um, this summer we're going to have something to sell. Prickly pears as well. In two years, you start to have something to sell. So there's vegetables, different options, so we're looking at that. We're going to want to create uh, water ponds uh, um, and uh, to, you know, to improve our, our water resilience. We want to build uh, basic infrastructure, and we want to start measuring everything that we're doing and to start uh, creating a way in which we can take everything that we're doing on the land, everything that we're learning, and putting, putting it in a way that, uh, is interesting, uh, that is easily accessible by people that, you know, people, you know, some real, try to get some real data out of everything that we're doing. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, a presentation of, of uh, our farm. And, um, 
Um, yeah, I think uh, it's almost time. That's perfect, actually. We have 20 minutes to... to I, I can't believe that was 40 minutes already. Uh, we have 20 minutes to... Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, more than happy to, to, to answer. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, the cost of this type of uh, farming is uh, more expensive than the normal? To put all, the, all of these trees to help the other plants? The, that's a, a very good question and that's at the, at the foundation of what we're trying to do. In the sense, what we're trying to do is, is find solutions that are economically viable. And ecologically interesting, but economically viable is a, print, is a very big part. And I have to admit to you, the way we've done some things this year was not economically viable. But now we're analyzing it and we're looking at this. That didn't work economically. We have to change this. We have to make a compromise. Less of this, less of that, less quality, you know? So um, I'm at the moment measuring everything uh, and, and taking notes of everything, how much it costs and uh, the different projects, etc. Hopefully we'll be able to see, for example, the mulch that we did, all these wood chips. You know, we're going to be able to see in time what's the economical benefits that they bring and compared to the cost that they, that they how much they cost to do. Uh, but yeah, um, through this measuring and through this, you know, trying to improve the systems, we'll, whatever happens, uh, and based on these other farms that I've seen, this type of farming costs more at the beginning. But the thing with this type of farming is that you're investing more at the beginning to activate ecological processes that in the future will pay back without your work. When microorganisms, microorganism populations are running on my farm, I, won't have, I don't have to fertilize. I don't have to create biofertilizer. I don't have to go around uh, send uh, uh, fertil fertilizer into my irrigation system or anything, which is all labor. It all takes time. It's all a cost. So the objective, the, the, let's say the theory, and we're going to see, I, I hope this works, but maybe it doesn't, but the theory says that um, um, at the beginning it's more expensive, but as, as you advance it becomes less and less expensive relative to conventional methods. But the other thing that we have to know is that there's something that financially we do not value, and these are ecosystem services. The fact that we have black soil in, on our land, I've already been to some 30 year old organic, to one 30 year old organic farm in Sparti in the Peloponnese. This guy has created soil that's better than the forest soil on, an, on, an, on a lemon farm. That he has this much black soil, like really black, 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 black. And he's got more soil, but I'm talking about top soil that's black. Why is nobody valuing this work? He's taking CO2 from the atmosphere and putting it down into the soil. He's, if, he, if he goes away and he leaves his farm, whoever goes there next starts with an amazing basis of fertility. They don't need to fertilize, they don't need to do anything. Who's paying, for, who's paying him for this? Who's, who's valuing his, his work? So, yes, it costs more to be biological. It costs more to be regenerative, uh, which, is, can be, which regenerative goes beyond organic standards. We're really trying to regenerate. We're not just trying to be sustainable. Uh, and, and these economic, ben economic benefits, uh, these ecological benefits, nobody's valuing them, nobody's paying for them, uh, when, whilst they should be. So this is a, a whole theme that's being uh, talked about by many people and that's being uh, studied by many people, uh, especially in France with uh, uh, um, uh, these people called Ferme d'Avenir and they're finding a way to, to give monetary value, unfortunately, to, to these ecological benefits. Although we shouldn't be putting monetary value. We should just be like, yes, it's important to create soil, it's important to plant trees and to save our forests, full stop. But uh, this doesn't talk to people, so we have to give money, put money value on it. This is how much we value we create by planting a forest. So this is how much we, uh, value we create by fixing, increasing organic matter by 1%. And maybe the EU will give us funds for this, and it's the same bullshit, but yes. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, the modern language, let's say. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody, anybody else have some questions? I think we have uh, somebody at the back over there. What? Hello, thank Hi. you for coming here and informing us uh, about <laughs> your farm and uh, permaculture and uh, agro farming. Um, um, one of my questions, I guess, because there's probably a bunch of questions that I would have, um, is uh, uh, you have 
Many small crops, right? Mm -hmm. Or a large one, three, four, five large ones, mm -hmm. and then smaller ones. Um, many of them are for fertilizing, but uh, a lot of them have uh, harvesting mm -hmm. involved. Um, so where do you, uh, do, do you sell all your products? Is, so, is that something that's uh, been researched uh, in Stira in Greece and um, it'll work out fine? Do you mean the crops that we planted, are they going to work out? Or do you mean how are we going to sell the crops, how the diversity you, how that are we you have? Gonna, yeah, because it's a... Because there's a lot of diversity, a, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, that's a really good question, and that goes back to the same thing we were talking about earlier on. Like, how do we make ecologically polycultures are great? More, not just one crop. You don't have a monocrop. You have a polycrop. Great. How do you make that work economically? So we're, tr we're building solutions for that. And one of the things that I found, um, for example, I've got I've managed to make made a friend in Eritrea in Evia who has almonds. He has a lot of almonds, and he has an almond. Uh, processing machine. So when I've got my almonds, I'm going to take them to this guy and he's going to process them for me and I'm going to pay him, let's say, 5% of my, of my uh, revenue of the, uh, it could be or 50 cents charges, per kilo or yeah. whatever. And then together, we're going to find, for example, a shop in Germany that wants Greek almonds and who's asking for 10 tons. I'm going to have two, three tons. He's going to have seven tons eight tons, and together we're going to be able to satisfy the demand of this one guy out there. So we're going to work together in terms of processing and we're going to work together in terms of marketing uh, to sell our, our almonds, for example. Uh, same thing with pistachios. I found a pistachio grower that has the machines, that has everything, so I just produce my pistachios and I send it and, I, and take it to him. He, he can do all the work. Either I, le I sell them to him or together, because he doesn't speak French, I speak French, I have some contacts there, together we sell to, to Switzerland. That's one example, uh, but the problem, the, the difficulty with having this polyculture is that you have to be knowledgeable about pistachios, figs, pomegranates, prickly pears, uh, how to prune uh, eucalyptus, acacia, how to take care of carobs, this, that, vines, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's but, but that's, I find that thrilling, I find that yeah, super too, exciting, you know, like, yeah. if I can learn how to, a tree is a tree at the end of the day, some trees they have more, more uh, certain needs, uh, others have other needs, etc., that you need to be sensitive to. And we've integrated, that's why we've planted our trees in this way. The trees and the pomegranates in the middle, they don't need full sunlight. They actually are much healthier with semi-shade. Yeah. So that's maybe 80% sunlight in the day, 70% sunlight. And they're much healthier. Whereas, for example, the fig trees, they need full sunlight. Yeah. So, you know, we're planting them in a way that, based on the sunlight needs, uh, also on our land, we've planted certain trees in some areas, others in other areas, more rocky, less rocky, etc. You know, so um, in terms of nutrients, um, um, I'm going on a, on a bit of a side thing now, but it's really oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I find uh, when you start fixing the microbiology in the soil and you start using compost, you don't decide what the tree wants. You know, the agronomers will say, the tree needs this much nitrogen at this time, that much this at this time, etc., etc. But the tree can also decide for itself what it needs then. And so when you, when you give him all, all that it needs in the soil, in, in the form of compost and micro, microbiology, so you give the whole basis, the foundation, of fertility, then the tree starts interacting in symbiosis with the microorganisms and starts sending signals and hormones to the microorganisms that's, that the, and the microorganisms start mining specific types of nutrients from the compost, from the humus uh, and from the, 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 mineral, the mineral soil and providing it to the tree. Same yeah. thing with mycorrhiza, uh, the symbiosis yeah. over there. It's like we can also let the tree decide and maybe we'll, each fig tree is going to produce uh, maybe each of my fig trees is not going to produce, let's say, I've got kimi figs, so it's dried figs. Maybe they won't produce 30 kilos of dried figs uh, per tree. They might do 20, 25, but I'm going to have such a healthier tree. Yeah, it'll be uh, more resistant to pests and to... Uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, and a better product. A much, much more nutritional product. Have and a much tastier product. Much more expensive to sell as well. Have you, know? you seen this work with uh, pistachios? Because they're kind of infamous for uh, yeah, pest yeah. control. Yeah. I, I'm uh, pistachios are my gonna be my my big challenge. Okay. The, I'm I'm very aware of the, how difficult they are, and it's also not just a question of techniques; it's also a question of genetics. And we'll see. But if if I manage to produce pistachios uh, in this organic way, 
in beyond organic way, uh, then it might be a message, you know, yeah, a strong message. It's possible, probably. If not, then, um, yeah, fair enough. Like, I did, I'll just cut them and plant something else. <laughs> um, yeah. one of them fails, yeah, it's totally. not that big a deal, you have other, other things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, I mean, the, this system also, so, uh, one of the, the, the big uh, principles of the system is to not become input dependent. Um, we want to, we don't want to irrigate more and more every year as our trees need more water because they grow, etc., or give more and more fertility. That, it doesn't make sense. This is not, this is, the, the more, every t in a sense, we're not trying to work more and more, we're trying to work less and less uh, on the farm. We're trying to let the trees do more and more of the work on their own. Um, so this system also, for example, when I've got uh, an acacia planted in between two fig trees, um, my fertility is being produced on site, on the farm. I don't have to bring in tons of manure. My fertility is there. All I have to do is take my chainsaw, cut the tree, take its leaves and, uh, or its branch, leave it in between my row, and then pass a uh, hortocoftico, oh, it's, oh, yeah, uh, catastrophea, and just destroy, mow the whole thing. Okay, Dax, it's like, uh, um, it, for me, it's pruning with the, with the chainsaw and, uh, and, um, and then mowing with the tractor. Um, and when I, it's going to be, this is going to be take time, but it's going to be with, especially with the help of the tractor and stuff, it's efficient. So, the fertility is produced there on the site. Yeah. Does anybody have any any other questions or anything they want to um, clarify or whatever? No. All good. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.